Hi, Exec Online listeners. HR executives are rising to the challenge during these unprecedented times, and Stacey Hohen is leading these efforts at GE Capital. Stacey is the Executive Vice President of Human Resources at GE Capital and responsible for developing organizational and talent strategies, as well as leading the company's global HR team. We sat down with Stacey and learned that when facing a crisis, her team has made an emphasis on the ability to focus, prioritize, and communicate. This strong culture helps their talent place trust in the organization and prepares them to be resilient for the future of work. Wanted to kind of start out, uh, Stacey, actually just, um, you know, ask you how you're doing. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's always nice when you ask, you know, the HR person who's asking everybody else, when you can ask that question, I'm doing great. I, um, I am working from home. I actually did have the opportunity to go into our office last week, which was really interesting. I had just a couple little things I had to do there. Um, but I am doing well. My family is doing well. So we count ourselves fortunate. So tell us a little bit about the journey you've been on um, at GE Capital. You know, when did your response yeah. fully take shape? And, and you, know, you know, how has it, how has it gone for you guys? So first of all, Adam, I, th- I have to thank you for inviting me here. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. It, look, it's been interesting. I think it's a little different for everybody, but at GE Capital, we are, again, we're fortunate because most of our employees can work from home. We have a handful of people that do come into the office every day because they're in essential jobs. Um, but the majority of our people are, are successfully working from home. So, you know, look, at first when, when we sort of transitioned to most of our employees working from home, we thought we were going to lose productivity. We thought people would be distracted and we really were not going to find our employees being as productive as they could have been. And you know what, to be honest, we could not have been more wrong. People are incredibly productive. We have some, some projects that are ahead of plan it was really helpful to know that we could transition to work from home and still run the business. I think the other thing is that our people leaders have have really stepped up. And, you know, it seemed like in the office, you were always sort of coaching people leaders, don't forget to have round tables or make sure you're communicating with your team, make sure you're having staff meetings or whatever. Now the people leaders are so visible because they understand exactly how important it is. We were about a month into this, did a pulse survey, And it turns out we're doing pretty well on those two things, on ensuring people have the tools they need to be productive and on making sure our people leaders are visible to our employees. There's always things we can do better and we're working on those things. But I think overall, from a work productivity perspective, it's been a positive experience. Obviously, a lot of anxiety and a lot of things that you gotta focus on related to the pandemic, which have not been so positive. But one of the things we're trying to do is really focus on kind of this notion of mental and emotional health and help our employees understand that there are are boundaries, but it's up to them to really create them. Um, So we're providing tools, we're providing webinars, we're working with different external parties to really help kind of round that out for our employees because we're not, none of us are used to, most of us are not used to working from home 100% of the time. And it, you can just get, it can just be this vortex and you just get sucked into constantly working. So I would say that's one of our big challenges right now that we're really working on. What kind you of know, learnings have you, have you had as an organization and, and, and maybe I personally think, as well? I, yeah, I think the first, the first learning, which was really clear really early on, was the importance of communication. You know, and I think we all always talk about how important communication is, but I think it's never been as important as it is today. You know, if you're in the middle of a crisis, you have got to communicate with your employees. You have to communicate frequently. You have to use different channels. You've got to communicate from the top to the bottom of the organization. Your people leaders have to be engaged in communications and not everybody's a good communicator. So you have to help those people be better communicators. And so while we might've thought from a learning perspective, we wanted to focus on how good our people leaders are at, let's say, giving feedback. The first thing we we focused on is how good are our people leaders at communicating? Because it is so important right now. We changed our communication rhythms. We changed our strategy around how frequently we communicate. Um, so that I think was the first learning, and I'm I'm very grateful that we have a really strong uh, communications team that kind of helps us out and and you know helps us along in that regard. The second thing I think, and I I don't think this is different from any crisis, the ability to be focused and prioritize is critical. 
And what a crisis does is it gives you the opportunity to say no to things that are not in the scope of getting through the crisis. Because at the moment, we have some very important things that we've got to get through and we've got to help our employees get through. And if things are coming on your plate that are not in the scope of what you have to focus on right now or what you have to prioritize, then you have to have the ability to say no to them. And for me personally, that's one of the things I'm always working on. I it's hard for me to say no to things, and I, it's certainly thing, feedback that I've gotten personally. And so I've really tried to develop that muscle. Now, sometimes it might atrophy a little bit, and then I have to work on it again. But, um, but I do think prioritization and focus are such an important thing right now, and, uh, and it's something I think we're all really working on. Great, and, and to, to follow up on the prioritization uh, point real quickly. So, yeah. so one of the things I've heard from other CHROs and in, 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 you know, who've been you know, kind of struggling with this is that, um, you know, some of their talent processes have, have kind of blown up a little bit, you know, as they're thinking about performance reviews, they're thinking about talent reviews and sort of when those things are, are kind of happening and, and, and sort of how to rethink those in, in the COVID, you know, kind of 19 yeah. environment. Is that something that you guys have had to sort of rethink? I would say that our, our talent reviews have never been more important. And so we have stuck to our process, we have stuck to our timeline, and we have not shifted that. We, I actually just, with our CEO, completed our talent review last week. And I think it's really important to talk about your talent and talk about how they're doing in the face of a crisis. Now, the content might be a little different, but yep. the fact that you're doing a talent review is not different. And so one of the things we talked about, for example, when you're leading an organization, you see people step up in different ways in a crisis than you do sort of in a normal day to day. And so it gave us an opportunity to talk about people who are stepping up in a really big way that you might not have expected. You start to see people flex leadership skills that you didn't really know they had. So I think that part of the process is, is really critical. Now, when you talk about performance reviews and feedback, when we did our pulse survey, one of the areas where we scored the lowest was around feedback. And it was around people leaders giving feedback to their teams. Now, we, we still scored relatively well. We were in the 80s. But that means, you know, roughly 20% of our population feels like they're not getting good performance feedback. So we will have a very rigorous mid-year performance review process. But we're going to have to teach our people leaders who are not used to giving virtual feedback how to do that. Yeah, I, I love that point, which is just like, you know, now more than ever, actually, those core processes are, are really important, have to change a little bit, but, but super important. Yeah. I think that's a great, a great takeaway as, as we're sort of thinking about uh, what comes next. So how does learning kind of fitting in? Learning has always been part of the value proposition at GE and at GE Capital, and we're not going to walk away from that. That, it, that will continue to be a really important part of our value proposition to our employees. How we engage in learning has obviously changed dramatically. We have always always worked this balance between virtual and in-person, but we see a lot of value in in-person and we see a lot of value in experiences. I think clearly we're going to we're going to continue to invest in our talent and learning is going to be a big piece of that. One of the critical things is how do you take what is so rich about an in-person experience and how do you create that virtually? I don't think we've got all the answers yet, but I think we're working on it. Great, that's that's terrific. So, so I want to also talk a little bit about um, just uncertainty in general, and sort of what that means for the for the employee base, and 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 how you guys kind of manage that. You, you know, so so how do you keep people engaged? What we can do is we can tell our employees what we know when we know it, and that measure of transparency and candor in our communication is absolutely critical because what then happens is our employees trust us, and they trust their leaders to be open and honest with them. In terms of uncertainty, that, that is, I think, the best we can do from a, from a leadership perspective. Shifting to engagement, you know, we kind of early on decided we needed to have an engagement strategy. So we created four different work streams, wellness, productivity, learning, and people leadership, all underpinned by communications. And each work stream has a team leader and a small team, and we get together every single week. And there's a lot of interface between the four work streams but we basically have developed our engagement strategy based on those pillars 
and it allows us to go out to our employees with different things that will be valuable to them to help them know that we care about them that we care about their experience that we want them we want to help them be productive we want to help them focus on their wellness we want to make sure they're continuing to learn we want to make sure our people leaders understand how to lead in a virtual environment so for example on the wellness side Last week, we just completed our Health Ahead Week, where we had a whole week of activities, including things like resilience training and um, gratitude and physical challenges that people could do virtually. Um, so that was last week. Coming up next month, we're going to have a week dedicated to lean so that our employees can learn what does it mean to work in a lean operating system. So I think having a structure around it has helped us as an HR team and a communications team and a leadership team figure out how do we really make the most of engaging our employees. You know, to other organizations right now who are trying to do what you're doing, which is create a productive workforce, create an engaged workforce, um, you, you know, any kind of advice that you would give to, to other, you know, chief human resources officers yeah. out there? For me, one of the things is just clear the clutter, I call it. So again, your email box is just filled with all kinds of stuff and you look at the news or you look at you know, some website or whatever and you just see all kinds of stuff. I think you have to decide what are the things you're gonna rely on. And after that, I, you have to rely on your instinct and your experience and you have to lead from that. Um, so you're leading in a way that's informed but, but you just cannot listen to all the stuff that's coming in. You have to kind of clear a path. Otherwise you will get nothing done. Yep, yep, I, I, I like that, and we'll, we'll leave it at that, uh, Stacy. And, and I think clear the clutter, you know, among many of the, of the great insights, you know, coming out of this call, uh, very much, very much appreciated. So thank you, Stacy. Great, Adam. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure talking to you today. This has been another episode of Stories from the HR Frontline, brought to you by Exec Online. Special thanks to Stacy Hohen and to you for tuning in. Listen to more stories on demand by going to our website, execonline.com/hrfrontline, or Follow Exec Online on LinkedIn for the latest updates. Interested in sharing your story? Email us at stories at execonline.com. Stay well and stay safe.